Long before dinosaurs, there was a killer. No teeth, just slicing jaws of bone. No mercy, just power. Its name was Dunkleosteus, a predator so terrifying it could crush armored prey, even its kind, all while wearing its suit of armor. This is the story of a prehistoric monster with a bite stronger than a crocodile and a look that could scare a megalodon. Meet the monster, an ocean without whales or dolphins, before sharks dominated the seas, before anything had legs to walk on land. That was the world of Dunkleosteus. It swam roughly 382 to 358 million years ago, during the late Devonian period, long before the first dinosaur ever roared. At an average of 11 feet long, and with rare individuals reaching up to 13 feet, Dunkleosteus terrelli wasn't the biggest animal ever, but in its time, it was king. Some early reconstructions guessed sizes up to 30 feet, but more recent studies suggest those were exaggerations. This armored fish ruled the ancient seas that once covered parts of North America, Morocco, Belgium, and Poland. It wasn't just big, it was deadly. Its jaw could clamp down with 7,400 newtons of force. That is on par with a T-Rex or a modern crocodile. It didn't just bite prey, it destroyed it. Dunkleosteus is the first vertebrate super predator, an apex predator in a world where evolution was still figuring out what scary meant. Built like a tank, take a look at Dunkleosteus, and it doesn't look like a fish. It looks like a tank that learned to swim. Its skull and the front part of its body were covered in thick, bony plates. These weren't flimsy scales. Some of these plates were up to three inches thick. It was like medieval armor underwater. But it wasn't just for defense. That bone-plated head helped deliver devastating power in every bite. And while most of the back half of its body didn't fossilize, leading to different interpretations of what it looked like, the front alone told scientists everything they needed to know. This thing was built for battle. Fossils often keep only this armored head and chest because the rest was likely cartilage or thin skin that didn't fossilize well. That's why most museum reconstructions focus on the jaws and plate. The business end of Dunkleosteus, jaw-dropping power. It had no teeth. Instead, its jaws were made of two sharp-edged bony blades that sliced like scissors. These jaws were unique in another way, too. Every time the fish opened and closed its mouth, the blades ground against each other, keeping them razor sharp. They were self-sharpening weapons, but it gets worse. Dunkleosteus didn't just bite with force, it struck with speed. It could open its mouth in less than one-fiftieth of a second. That speed created a vacuum, sucking prey straight into its jaws like an ancient vacuum cleaner of death. And when those jaws closed, they could crush bones, shells, and armor born to hunt. From the moment a baby Dunkleosteus was born, life was dangerous. It was born into a world full of hungry mouths, including its own brothers and sisters. Some fossils suggest Dunkleosteus might have even eaten its siblings shortly after birth. Imagine your first danger in life being your own family. But these baby predators were born strong. Even as juveniles, they had powerful jaws, not as strong as the adults, but still strong enough to crush small fish and soft-bodied animals. This meant they didn't need to wait to grow up to start hunting. As they got bigger, their jaws changed shape. Scientists have found that the jaws of younger Dunkleosteus were more suited for soft prey. But as they grew, the jaws became longer and sharper, perfect for slicing into tougher, armored prey like other placoderms. This change in jaw shape also shows how their diet evolved as they matured. Fossil Detectives The first fossils of Dunkleosteus were discovered in 1867 by a man named J. Terrell. He found them on cliffs near Lake Erie in Ohio. At first, scientists thought these bones belonged to another fish called Dinichthys, but later they realized this was something new. In 1956, the fish was officially named Dunkleosteus after paleontologist David Dunkel. Ohio became one of the most important places in the world for finding Dunkleosteus fossils. In fact, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History 
holds the largest collection of these fossils. They even have a nickname for their star fossil, Dunk. Many Dunkleosteus fossils are found in hard rock formations called concretions, which helped preserve the bones for millions of years. But even then, most fossils only show the front part of the body, the armored skull and chest. The rest of the fish didn't fossilize well, so scientists often have to guess what it looked like using related fish. What did it really look like? For many years, scientists believed Dunkleosteus looked like a long, shark-like fish. That made sense. It was fast and powerful, and it lived in open water. However, newer research has changed this idea. Recent studies, like the one by Russell Engelman, suggest it actually had a shorter, thicker body, more like a tuna than a shark. Its body shape would have made it fast in short bursts, but not for long-distance chasing. This makes sense because it used surprise and strong bites to catch prey, not speed alone. Earlier studies thought it might grow up to 10 meters, 33 feet, long. But now we know that most adult Dunkleosteus were around 3.4 to 4.1 meters long, 11 to 13 feet. Even at that size, it was still the largest predator in its time. Life in the Devonian Seas Dunkleosteus lived in shallow, warm seas that covered much of today's North America, Europe, and North Africa. This period, the Devonian, is also called the Age of Fishes because fish ruled the oceans. These waters were filled with other armored fish, early sharks, ammonites, spiral-shelled animals like ancient squids, and even sea scorpions. And guess what? Dunkleosteus probably ate them all. It was a top predator, meaning it sat at the top of the food chain. But fossils show that sometimes, even Dunkleosteus became prey. Bite marks on some fossils match the jaws of other Dunkleosteus, showing that they might have fought each other, or even eaten each other, when food was scarce. What did Dunkleosteus really eat? While Dunkleosteus is often shown as a fierce hunter, some scientists believe it might also have been a scavenger. Fossils have been found with clusters of partially digested bones, called boluses, inside or near the body, suggesting it may have fed on the leftovers of dead animals. This would make sense for such a large predator in times when live prey was harder to catch. In fact, researchers think Dunkleosteus may have gulped down prey whole and spit out the bones afterwards, like modern sharks do. Also, its powerful jaws might have helped it crack open the shells of ammonites or armored fish, allowing it to feast on the soft insides. Whether stalking prey or cleaning up carcasses, Dunkleosteus used every advantage it had to stay on top of the food chain in the Devonian seas. Extinction of the armored giant. As powerful as it was, Dunkleosteus didn't survive forever. Around 359 million years ago, something terrible happened to the oceans. Scientists believe that two major extinction events, the Kelwasser and Hangenberg events, changed everything. These events caused ocean oxygen levels to drop. When oxygen levels fall, large active animals like Dunkleosteus can't survive. As a result, not just Dunkleosteus, but all placoderms went extinct. Up to 80% of marine life disappeared in this mass extinction. So, Dunkleosteus, the king of the Devonian Sea, vanished forever. Not because of another predator, but because the environment itself changed too fast. What we still don't know. Even though scientists have learned a lot about Dunkleosteus, many things are still a mystery. Most fossils only show the front part of the fish, the head, and chest. We don't know exactly what the tail looked like. Some scientists think it looked like a shark's tail. Others say it had a tuna-like body. Another debate is about its true size. Some early studies said it grew over eight meters long, while newer research says four meters is more likely. The truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. These questions keep paleontologists working hard, using new tools and methods to learn more. The Real Jurassic Park in Cleveland, most people don't realize that one of the greatest sea predators ever lived right under modern-day Ohio. During the late Devonian, this area wasn't land. 
It was a vast, warm inland sea, filled with prehistoric life. This is where some of the best Dunkleosteus fossils have been found, especially in the Cleveland Shale. The most famous specimen, CMNH5768, was unearthed here and is now displayed at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. In fact, Dunkleosteus terelli was named Ohio's official state fossil fish in 2020. Construction projects like building highways in the 1960s helped uncover many of these ancient remains. Thanks to this unique combination of science, history, and luck, Ohio became one of the most important fossil sites for this terrifying predator. It's almost like having a real-life Jurassic Park. Only this one is full of armored fish instead of dinosaurs. Even though it's been extinct for millions of years, Dunkleosteus still captures people's imagination. It appears in video games like Ark, Survival Evolved, documentaries like Prehistoric Predators, and even toys and action figures. At the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, you can see a real fossil of Dunkleosteus, nicknamed Dunk. Kids and adults alike visit to get a close look at the armored skull and imagine what it would have been like to meet this monster in the sea. Dunkleosteus reminds us of a time when fish were kings of the ocean and of the power and danger that once swam in our ancient seas. If you enjoyed this dive into prehistoric waters, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know which ancient creature you want us to explore next.